Today on Refined, we get our grill on. Three pounds of halibut, three pounds of rockfish, please. Three pounds of halibut, three pounds of rockfish. That was good. That was good. Magic. (laughs) Fireworks in the kitchen as we learn the perfect way to cook seafood and steak. Plus, what's the fourth without a good dog? Peanut butter and jelly? Yeah, it's bomb. I'm telling you, dude. Refined sinks our teeth into the best and most unique hot dogs in town. And a twisted patriotic thriller hits theaters today. Refined's film critic unleashes his thoughts on the first purge. Chatter Refined starts now. Hi, everybody. Happy 4th of July. I'm Gard Swanson, and welcome to a very special Star Spangled edition of Seattle Refined. Rain or shine, we know a lot of you are firing up the grill today at an Independence Day picnic or maybe even a barbecue. And if seafood is on the menu, there is no one I'd rather cook with than celebrity chef Nathan Lyon. with Nathan. Man, this is an honor. This guy is the real deal. So nice to have you on board here in Seattle. Thanks, girl. I appreciate it. Listen, I am so excited to be here because Seattle is a city that always seems to be brimming with delicious, sustainable seafood. Oh, yeah. And and what I mean by sustainable seafood is seafood that is caught or farmed in ways that are friendlier to the environment. So by making smart choices, you can enjoy a tasty (laughs) meal while taking care of the earth at the same time. And it's a win-win, right? Yeah, and you're making me hungry, my man. You're you know, really making me hungry. And what's this app thing you have? That's, that thing's pretty cool. That's right. We talked about that. This is the Seafood Watch app from the Monterey Bay Aquarium. It takes all the guesswork out of finding sustainable seafood. So you just type in the name of the fish, like, say, salmon. And it pops up. Wow, it's right there. Yeah, and you have all these with your best choice. So green is good. Green is good. Just like think of like a stoplight. So green, go. Yellow, you're like, that's pretty good, but red, no good. You stop. You stop and don't get any of these. Hey, will you help me pick out some fish? Everybody loves salmon up here, but right. how do you know you're getting the right one and a fresh one? Well, let me show you how to do yeah, this. Yeah, let's do that. If you were to pull, say, this beautiful king salmon right out of the water, it would look just like this. The eyes are really clear, the skin, the flesh is very firm. There's no damage in there. Um, and it doesn't smell like fish. It smells like the ocean when you get your nose in there. Oh, yeah. And that's when you know it's really fresh. If, if the skin is really soft and it looks like it's been through a lot of damage and the eyes are sunken in, that's not a good sign. Hey, guys, uh, three pounds of halibut, three pounds of rockfish, please. Three pounds of halibut, three pounds of rockfish. That was good. That was good. Magic. <laughs> All right, let's go grill this up. All right, sounds All right. great. All right. Yeah, Nathan, this fish looks fantastic. It's really fresh. I mean, it's hard to get fresher, really, when the ocean's just right behind us, right? So what I'm doing right now, Gard, is I'm just patting any sort of excess moisture off the fish, because that will allow uh, the season to go on more readily. Mm -hmm. And it'll also, the drier the fish, the less likely it is to stick on the grill. So you want it really dry. Rule of thumb, and it's mostly correct, it's about eight minutes of cooking on medium-high per inch thickness of fish. So this halibut is maybe an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half. Right. That's roughly 14 minutes. And this beautiful rockfish, that may be, I don't know, maybe half an inch? Yeah. So you can flip five it eights. after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As a construction guy, you say five eighths. Yeah, so this is probably three minutes on each side. All right, now these are definitely done. And the reason I know that is because when you see fish and it's starting to flake, like just beginning to Look flake apart that. like that, but not oh. dry. Still good moisture, steamy, it's all opaque. These bad boys are ready. Let's go eat. Okay. So we're talking about these beautiful pieces of um, sustainable fish. We got the rockfish and even the halibut that we crusted in fresh herbs. Mm, it's just, fall, just falling apart. It's, it should be really buttery, which they totally are. Mm. <laughs> that is very nice. All of it on a grill, using sustainable seafood, fresh and seasonal, just the way you like it. The Seafood Watch app, right, buddy? Seafood Watch app. It's easy to download. It gives you all the information you need. It is a painless, fun app. And I think you can taste the difference right there. It's fantastic. To learn more about the seafood you eat or to get the app Nathan was talking about, check out seafoodwatch.org. If you really want to impress folks at your July 4th picnic, try adding some prosciutto to the mix. If you don't know, prosciutto is a delicious dried cured ham. 
and something of a delicacy. In fact, it has such a fan base, there's even a prosciutto party of sorts at an Italian restaurant on Capitol Hill. Our refined staff went to La Spiga and got schooled on the art of prosciutto from different cuts to different recipes. To learn more, head to seattlerefined.com. Obviously, when you have friends and family over to celebrate, you want it to be a fantastic feast they won't soon forget. And if you want to learn how to make a steak that will set off the fireworks in your mouth, we discovered the perfect recipe. This July 4th, let your taste buds celebrate with a delicious steak. That's why I headed to West Seattle to meet up with Jeff Anderson, the executive chef of Safeway and Albertsons. This guy is the master of meat, the prince of prime rib, the king of all cuts. Okay, I'm getting a little carried away, but Chef Jeff really knows his stuff. Hey, how's it going? I'm Guard. I'm Jeff. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, Jeff. All right, what are we making today? We've got a fantastic open nature beef tenderloin that we're going to sear and then roast with a little bit of bacon and Dijon butter on top of it. It's going to be delicious. All right, let's go shopping. First things first, we made our way to the meat department. There are a lot of options here. Yeah, well, you know what? There's a lot of different cuts of meat to choose from. The reason I like open nature beef is it's all natural. There's no added hormones or antibiotics. Uh, it's grass fed. This filet mignon is the perfect cut for us for our steak. Okay, we're going left. I grabbed a two pound pack, so I got plenty on him. Okay, so this is what we need right here. Yep. We need some green beans. There's a okay. bag up here to the left. How many? Pound, uh, two pounds? That's a good handful. Potatoes. We're going to some potatoes, too. All right, here we go. Okay, let's go. I'm hungry. Me, too. After grabbing our ingredients, Chef Jeff and I headed to my kitchen to get cooking. So you have a beautiful piece of meat here. What's the secret to cooking it? Well, you know what, whether it's roasting a piece of meat or grilling a piece of chicken outside or fish, the key is don't touch it. Let it brown before you flip it over. Don't get nervous and, you know, A lot fidget. of people do. No fidgeting. So what's really cool about Open Nature Meats is in the Seattle area, these are available exclusively at Safeway or Albertson stores. So no other retailer has this quality of cut of meat um, in terms of like the Open Nature products. So tell me a little bit about the, the compound butter. What kind of mixture are we making? Well, uh, we're going to mix it with hickory smoked bacon and Dijon mustard. It's it starts with unsalted butter, so that way we can control the amount of seasoning we're putting in it. And what about the potatoes? What are we doing with those? For this dish, we're going to put them in the microwave and just briefly steam them. By microwaving the potatoes and also steaming the green beans in the microwave, we're getting back the gift of time, which for the holidays is a perfect thing. You want to simplify your meal preparation. And then we're going to put just a little bit of olive oil on each of these, which is going to... You love the olive oil, don't you? If you ever have a dry plate of food and you want to bring everything together, a little bit of olive oil and help the juices kind of migrate together, oh my God, it's the best. Those look perfect. Let's put a nice dollop of butter on this. Okay, you ready? Let's do this. Here we go. Cheers. Mmm, that is so good. This is a good meal right from Safeway. Yeah, absolutely. Nice work. Cheers. Happy holidays. Thank you. To check out today's recipe, log on to SeattleRefined.com and search for a steak that will knock their socks off. Seattle Refined isn't done in the kitchen just yet. Because it's so good, you're coming back for more. Is that right? Yeah. Coming up. Instead of red and blue, a Seattle top chef spices things up with a little green. But first, on this 4th of July, a tribute to the hot dog. Uh, New York dog, Chicago dog, Philadelphia dog, and now we have Seattle dog. It started right here. Refined searches for the best bites in Seattle. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show, I'm Guard Swanson. Well, if you're grilling for July 4th today, chances are there are a lot of hot dogs on the barbecue. But before you lather on the mustard and the onions, our refined super eater found some Seattle spots that might inspire you to let your dog run wild. John Prentice is a man with an appetite. Good thing too, because we sent him to find the best hot dogs in Seattle. And what better place to start than at Dog in the Park in the heart of downtown. Owner Ramazan Center claims this is the birthplace of the Seattle dog. Uh, New York dog, Chicago dog, Philadelphia dog, and now we have Seattle dog. It's, we, it started right here. 
And what is a Seattle dog? Cream cheese, toasted bun, caramelized vegetables, bon appetit. Well, whether or not this is where it all began, we agree the Seattle dog is world-class delicious, and our super eater is ready to dig in. All right, well, let's try one. Here we go. I make you one, and you tell us how good it is. One Seattle dog, sir. Uh, I hope and I wish all the Seattleites, if they didn't try Seattle dog, they must come here and try it and uh, spread the word to the rest of the world. You got it, Ramazan. Our next stop is a little cart named Das Bratwagen. It's loosely translated from German, uh, meaning the sausage cart. Owner Alex is out rain or shine, grilling up the best German-inspired brats in town. John steps up to the plate and orders the German. So it's just a third pound smoked brat with sauerkraut on top. And there's a variety of German mustards to top your brat. Some of these sauces I make myself for mustards, like this one, for example, is my gotcha mustard. What's in that? Uh, yeah, it's a sriracha mustard uh, made with the smoky garlic onion mustard. Yeah, that sounds excellent. This is a fantastic sausage. You can really tell it's just a good quality meat. I like that the uh, sauerkraut isn't too sweet, and the gotcha sauce has a nice kick to it. Yes. Really awesome yeah. job. Thank you very much. Appreciate this it. It's awesome. It's <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Well, from traditional German to something that sounds like a nine-year-old would invent, when we heard about this next hot dog, we knew we had to send John in to try it out. Peanut yeah. butter and jelly? Yeah, it's bomb. I'm telling you, dude. What's the secret? Like, is it just regular peanut butter and jelly? It's regular peanut butter. It's roasted raspberry, chipotle jam, oh. cream cheese, and slices of bacon. All right, that the, sounds bacon, like, the bacon is what makes it. That sounds like a game changer. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's give this a shot, okay? You can find Chad Ostrom at Rain City Hot Dogs in front of the Lowe's on Rainier Avenue, slinging smoky PBJ dogs five days a week. Chad, what is this, a fork? It's a fork, man, it gets messy. <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah. You nailed this, this is fantastic. It's got that savory sweet thing going on, a little bit of chipotle in the jam. It's fantastic. Nice job. Really good. Did we miss your favorite hot dog spot? Drop us a line at hello at seattlerefined.com and let us know. Coming up, a new movie is scaring audiences this 4th of July. What refined film critic thinks of the first purge. Plus, fried green tomatoes isn't just a classic movie, it's a thing at one Seattle restaurant. All right. That's pretty dang good. Right? Here at Seattle Refined, we never get tired of hearing from you. Like us on Facebook, tweet us your story ideas, or shoot us an email telling us what you want to see on the show. You can find our inbox at hello at seattlerefined.com. Seattle Refined will be right back. to the show on guard Swanson. I am so excited that summer is finally here. I love everything about it. The long days, the beautiful weather, the fresh veggies, the fresh fruits. And if you're looking for a refreshing summer treat to kind of liven up your 4th of July, our kitchen bestie, Heather Earnhardt, has you covered. So what's on the menu today? Today we're gonna do fried green tomatoes with comeback sauce. Okay, just, just so you know, I saw these sitting here. I'm not a big fan of fried green tomatoes. I've never liked them. Never. You can't say that. It's because you've never had a good one. But why come back? Why? Because it's so good. You're coming back for more. Is that right? Yeah, that's it. And then you got your cookbook out. Who's this guy slam dunking the that's ball my here? Dad. He was like ten years old. Yeah, in the backyard of our house in North Carolina. And he could slam. He could. He was tall. He was six yeah. six. And I love that backboard too. Brand new, right? <laughs> five, five back. Yeah. You see, you don't need anything fancy. <laughs> All right, let's get slicing. Okay, so we're gonna slice the green tomatoes first. And you don't wanna do them too thin, you wanna do them about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so you got them all sliced up. They're all sliced up, and we're gonna pour a little, some buttermilk just to cover them. And what does the buttermilk do to them? It's gonna help the cornmeal dredge adhere to them better. And then now we're gonna make our comeback sauce. Cool, let me help you. So we have about two cups of mayo here. But I'll add the chili sauce and okay. start mixing this. So this is just chili sauce. Um, this is uh, one cup. 
One cup of chili sauce. Yep. And a little, I'm gonna start whisking. Yep. We're gonna add uh, a little bit of Texas Pete hot sauce. And then this is just lemon juice. And then this, we have a little bit of onion powder, uh, garlic powder, dry mustard, and ca cayenne. It's going to give it a little pop. And then this is just kosher salt and pepper. And then the last thing we're going to do while you're whisking is mm -hmm. just drizzle in a few tablespoons of canola oil. Mm. That's good. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So fry green tomato with that. So we have a cornmeal dredge here. This is um, cornmeal with a little bit of flour. Uh, paprika, cayenne, little onion powder, a little garlic powder, salt and pepper. And then you're going to dip this in there, coat them. Yeah. Drop them in the oil for how long? Probably about four, three, four minutes. Not, they don't need to go too long. All right, Heather, here they are. Are you excited? Excited? Are not, you ready? Not really. Ready for your first real fried green tomato? Yes, I am ready. Gonna... But just to emphasize again, <laughs> not a big fan. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I grab this baby here. They're not too hot yet. Let's just dip them in and take a bite. Okay. Yeah. They're hot. <laughs> I've got kitchen fingers. My fingers are left. How could you not like that? All right. That's pretty dang good. Right? That's a slam dunk, just like your dad. <laughs> exactly. Keeps me coming back. That's good stuff. <laughs> Heather's cookbook, Big Food, Big Love, is in stores now. Seattle Refined will be right back. We ask. Welcome back to Refined. I'm Garth Swanson. We know a lot of you will celebrate tonight by watching fireworks with friends and family. But if you're in the mood for something completely different, a new film snuck into theaters today. Here's our Refined review of The First Purge. At the siren, all crime, including murder, will be legal for 12 hours. I feel like right about now, I should be telling you all the things that make The First Purge a horrible movie. It relies on a convoluted plot, wooden dialogue, disturbing stereotypes, and all those things are true. But the thing that makes The First Purge work is, it's friggin' scary. The movie takes place in Staten Island, New York, where America's new government is conducting an experiment that legalizes all crime for one 12-hour period called The Purge. Lex Scott Davis plays Naya, a community activist opposed to this sick enterprise. The community is participating in the purge because there is monetary gain. That is it. Um, everyone is struggling. Everyone is trying to make ends meet. And finally, in a way, their prayers have been answered with the amount of money that's being offered if they get through this one night. Tonight, we'll see the good and evil in everyone. But just when you think it couldn't get more messed up than government-funded murder and mayhem, things get even more sinister. You're sending soldiers into the island disguised as citizens. Okay, I won't give any more away. But suffice it to say, the first purge has enough truly frightening boogeymen, phone-chilling atmospherics, and cover-your-eyes moments to satisfy even hardcore horror fans. And in a world where politicians see cruelty more and more as sport, the dystopian world of The First Purge isn't that hard to imagine. I'm surprisedly giving The First Purge three scary masks. Scott Rondo, Seattle Refined. If I'd asked you, would you have come? I guess we'll never know. Also new at the movies this week, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Paul Rudd is back as Marvel's tiniest superhero in the sequel to the 2015 film. It's rated PG-13. Maybe you just need someone watching your back. And also arriving in theaters Friday, the documentary Whitney about the meteoric rise and fall of troubled superstar Whitney Houston. Our refined critic just got back from a screening and it's all he can talk about. Don't miss his spoiler-free review on Thursday. All right, that's going to do for today's show. I'm Guard Swanson. Have a good one, everybody. Happy Fourth of July. We'll see you next time right back here on Seattle Refined.